KBR 101, Utah's Classic Rock Authority. It's Sue Kelly sitting at the best radio studio I've ever had the pleasure to work in, right in front of Sleeping Beauty's Castle at the end of Main Street at Disneyland Resort in Southern California. And one of my very favorite people on the planet with me right now, Stacia Martin. Stacia, I started working here, I think, about uh, three months prior to her mother giving birth. <laughs> That's how long Stacia has been at the park. Oh, thank you. That's really nice to know because, of course, I will come up on my 35th anniversary at Disneyland this <sighs> June. So I guess that timeline would be about right. Yeah, um. see, the timeline <laughs> would be about right. You're about 35 now. Well, I'll tell you, Stacia is the historian, the resident historian and the official artist of Disneyland. And she's sitting here sketching with me right now. We'll have Jared take some pictures oh, and put some video up of her so you can actually see the magic she creates. One of my favorite things when I come to see Stacia is to quiz her and ask her all sorts of inside information. And I have to ask you, the 650 million people yes. visit Disneyland every year. How many people attended on the very first opening day in 55? A whole lot more than we bargained for. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, there were, oh, I'd say probably about 20,000 forged tickets. Oh, you're that, kidding me. No, that ended up coming. So that it was an invitation-only event. That was July 17th of 1955, the hottest summer that they'd had here in Orange County in years. And if you look at the newsreel footage, in fact, if you visit Town Square and go to the Opera House here on Main Street, which is the Disneyland story and Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln combined, in the Disneyland story, you see photos of opening day and movies shot on a helicopter of the lines just stretching past the gate and all along the berm because there were so many more people than really had been invited. And all, adding to that, they, they called it kind of Black Sunday because all <laughs> kinds of things went wrong. There was a, a plumbing strike very shortly before Disneyland opened. And so we had the option, said the uh, plumbing union, of having either restrooms or drinking fountains. Mm, and, tough call. You know, that was tough call, yeah. <laughs> but you know, but we were happy with our, our friends from Coca-Cola and our, you know, <laughs> beverages could maybe keep people its way so we opted for the restrooms but then we had that as our original plan of people that we would invited so add to that the extra forged tickets and it was rather chaos and bedlam but you know it was memorable and that was the thing it was still a brilliant opening day even though we hadn't quite planned to have quite so many guests but it was marvelous now i'm happy to say that with our newest opening here fantasy fair here in uh, disneyland we have everything quite under control and <laughs> there yes. will be no no extra bonus unexpected guests everyone is expected and not just by us but also by the princesses that you can have real actually individual quality time with really for the first time here in Disneyland so we're so excited about this well you know we um went to Ariel's Grotto a couple mm, of years ago mm -hmm. which is great and they come up and they come to your table and it's wonderful but if you don't get the opportunity to sit down and have a meal and take the time out this is spectacular the Royal Theater which is going to be opening tomorrow with yes. Fantasy Fair is delightful last night we saw uh, a play going on it was Rapunzel mm -hmm. and uh, Flynn Rider was there and I said to my daughter there's Flynn she goes oh mommy that's Eugene don't you know <laughs> just <laughs> that's true that's true he gave up his roguish ways you know and he's now you know Prince Consort Eugene but what's nice too is that not only does Rapunzel personally participate in the show and Flynn as well but we have Mr. Smythe and Jones who are kind of balladeers slightly medieval but they're also slightly vaudevillian and they have have that great kind of old music hall sensibility that you really don't get to enjoy much anymore. No. It's a show that's so musical. It's all carried on the wings of song, the melodies, of course, from the film, and they've taken it to another level, really, with the comedy. So it's it's a tremendously entertaining version of the show, and it's completely different, even if you know the movie by heart. Exactly. And you know what? Sometimes when you've been walking all day, it's so nice to come in and sit down in a theater for just a couple of minutes. Oh, that's right. Yeah, the Royal Theater is a large, round theater with an open open air kind of a window system all around the edges but beautiful lighting and things and it's nestled right in the heart of fantasy fair you can see out to the little courtyard and the rapunzel tower that's there in the market square and did you find figaro uh, yes, I did find Figaro. Pinocchio's kitten yes, tends to Pinocchio's doze kitten. on the lazy windowsill out there and plague the bluebird in the blue bird cage. And there's so many wonderful things that make it not just a new location, but actually a location that looks like it's been there the whole time, doesn't oh, yeah, it? It's a little totally. bit nestled right at the foot of Sleeping Beauty Castle. So 
it's new, but you're like, oh, did I just miss did this? Did I miss this? Yeah. Did I have, how have I walked past this all these years? In fact, I was looking around going, where's Carnation Plaza? And then it has transformed. That's right. And this is what I love, going back to what Walt Disney said about, you know, Disneyland will never be complete mm-hmm. uh, if well, there's imagination much. left in the world. And so that's what happens all the time here at Disneyland. Right. So you find something special and new. And I know people ask you all the time about the hidden Disneys. I know mm-hmm. we probably lost some in the transformation, but I'm sure new ones are there. Well, you know, I have to tell you, speaking of a little hidden thing, I'll tell you a little fun hidden thing that you you can Ooh, find when do. you go to Fantasy Fair. Uh, we're very, very happy that we were able to use the great talents of our Imagineer Michelle Dendulk as the creative director for this project. And Michelle is from Europe, and he has that great European architectural tradition of like the Brothers Grimm. You think of that whole right. sort of old world. Uh, much as Walt hired European artists like Gustav Tengren to style Snow White and Pinocchio. So Michelle has been able to give that same sensibility to Fantasy Fair. And in doing so, he's hidden little details details in, but he knows his Disney heritage and he knows how much Carnation Plaza Gardens was a part of many people's lives. Mm -hmm. So if you go inside the area, look around and there's little heraldic crests and little shields and little architectural details. One of those shields is actually a tribute to Carnation Plaza Gardens. It has three carnations on it and the initials and it just shows that, you know, Hmm. we're not forgetting where we've been. We're just continuing, as Walt said, to expand and grow and increase the wonderful opportunity we have for experience here within the Magic Kingdom. Well, I love that. In fact, somebody pointed it out to me today. I'm oh, not going to tell where it is. Oh, I yeah, saw no, it. I will not tell. Okay. But I did see it today. Uh, so uh, are they countless or how many hidden... Oh, are there. gosh. Well, it's not a hidden Mickey. This is this is a hidden crest. But hidden Mickeys, I really don't have a number on because it's a matter of opinion in a lot of cases. Yes. Some of the hidden Mickeys that are the most popular are illusions of light sometimes. Oh, cool. So, like, something will turn its head and cast a shadow, and then you go, oh, well, look, there's a hidden Mickey. And it may be a, an action that occurs with one of our audio animatronic figures every 10 minutes. You can say, oh, there it is. But is it really there or is it fate? You know, so, exactly. So the Imagineers do put in little hidden Mickeys and little hidden things. In fact, here's another thing you can find in Fantasy Fair. Have you seen Clopin's music box? Yes, I uh, did. Clopin is the uh, slightly mysterious um, street performer mu- musician from the Hunchback of Notre Dame. And if you visit Fantasy Fair, there's an old-fashioned music box. You turn the crank, and it's one of those big copper disc-type mechanisms inside. But we don't see the copper disc because instead we have discs that you can see that turn the moon and the sun. The stars cycle in the sky. You see Notre Dame. You see um, Quasimodo appear. You see Hugo, one of his gargoyles, kind of tossed by. He's like it's in a mosh pit almost. He goes by (laughs) over the the heads of the crowds. And there are other... Disney friends that are there in Clopin's music box that you can see as the music cycles through. So I'm not going to say who, but I'm going to say they're very tiny and look carefully and you'll be amazed. That's I, the, the detail is mm-hmm. extraordinary. And the fact that you can spend some time with the princesses, I will tell you that this morning, I think Mick and Alan from the Freak Show, who, mm-hmm. that's our afternoon team. They're going to be here for their first broadcast today. First ever. Oh, ever. Wow. But mm-hmm. I, I, I did see a little fear in, in Cinderella's eyes today. They got, they got a little too close. Well, now, you know, you know, like all castles, we do have guards yes. and dungeons. Yes. I, think that's always <coughs> a good, I, I think that's always a good idea to have, you know, Disney jail close by when these no, guys are no, there. No, no. They, were, they were overwhelmed. And fine. The magic. I mean, to see these guys, these grown guys coming in with their kids for the first time, it's so fun to watch them and oh, yeah. their reactions. These big, crazy rock and roll guys, and they're holding their little two-year-olds, and their faces are as full of joy as the kids. It's so much fun. That's exactly it. I was talking with somebody just yesterday saying, isn't this a lovely thing for the children to be able to meet the princesses? And we turned around and there was a group of about 40 ladies, none of whom had recently seen the age of 20, (laughs) uh, that were all posing, yes, all posing with my favorite princess, who is uh, Sleeping Beauty, the Princess Aurora. And they were just as dithery and happy as any 10 or under would have been. Plus, they were all sparkling because even if as a little one you go to the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique here in Fantasyland and get a complete makeover. Yep. If you're not too little and you still want to have a little bit of bling, our assistant fairy godmothers at the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique are happy to wave their wands, add some glitter, and make some of the big princesses feel special too. Can you say that again three times fast? Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, Stacia, it is always, always a pleasure. We're lucky enough to be giving away 15 trips in 15 days. 15? Oh yep. my goodness, that's so, wonderful. Yeah, well, one in three shot every single day at winning a trip. 
up, we've got our next opportunity coming up in just a few minutes, 1210. But if you don't happen to win on the air, you can always get online at kbear.com. And you should do that anyway. Stacia just finished up a gorgeous sketch of Rapunzel. She looks so cute. Thank I'm going to have you personalize that to I my will. little cricket. Thank you so much, Stacia. Oh, so